Now! Weapons. Weapons are a shorthand to convey how very important the menace is that Buffy's going to be facing. You remember this? I took it from Faith. You want to get it back from me? Dick? It's the moment in Aliens where Sigourney Weaver duct tapes the two guns together, and you sort of go, oh, this thing she's fighting is big. We always talk about why why don't uh, vampires use guns? You know, why don't, why don't we have modern weaponry? They are, by their nature, medieval. Three years I've been on Buffy, we've fired a gun maybe twice. The medieval weaponry is the only thing that's really effective for the Slayer. Just reaches back to that old vampire Transylvania mythology. There's more of an emotional connection to ancient weaponry. We could update it, but if the kids are so modern that it's kind of a nice contrast between that and contemporary culture. The vampires don't need weapons. They're a living weapon. The only thing that works against them would be a stake. You need to put a stake through their heart. So you're going to talk about props on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You got to talk about stakes. So you start out making a stake that is real wood. When we actually do the dusting, we use what's called a retractable. But when it's fast, you come in, we stab vampires all the time and to look like it's going in the skin. Joss do, did a drawing of a knife that looked a lot like this, and I found it in a catalog. It was different than his drawing a little bit, but he just wanted a multi-bladed uh, prop weapon. The cool thing was it had a cool name, Hunga Munga. It's meant to be thrown, and wherever it hits, unless it's directly on the handle, it'll do some cutting. After a while, you know, a wooden stake is that old thing. So we were just trying to give her a little more. It's like any fashion accessory for Buffy. She's always looking for something new and hit. Put a ball bearing on one side of the Hunga Munga, away from camera, and would just put it on a rod and spin it. So it would appear that it would catch it flying through air, but it would just be standing, spinning in front of camera. I very much wanted to see Giles with a sword in his hand. I think that Tony Head is an actor who can do a lot of different things very, very well, and one of them is be a badass. I wanted to see that because he'd been trapped in Tweed for a while at that point in season three, and I'd be thought it would be fun to let him break out. I think I got his attention. We actually have to make these practical. We don't want it to shoot like a real crossbow or it'll send the arrow right through you, so we use basically a big rubber band as a string, pull it back, and, and actually make him shoot, but it just spits it out of frame. We cut and go into a, it hitting a vampire. Buffy uses battle axes a lot, so I'm always on the lookout for small battle axes. It's another one. We just try to get different looks. This, this I actually altered from one that had another blade off to the side and chopped it down just to fit it in that bag. That look on your face is my reward. This is a thing of beauty, boss. He presented her with a, this elaborate knife, and uh, it became symbolic of the whole mayor-faith relationship. Weapons often reflect the character who uses them. A knife is a weapon where you need to be face to face with your enemy in order to kill them. It's a much more direct weapon. I see you're admiring my letter opener. Well, actually, I was thinking of stabbing you through the heart with it. Please do. This is the letter opener that Angel throws at the mayor. I made a lightweight duplicate of it. I made this out of aluminum to match it so he could throw it much quicker. They would place a piece that went on like this that uh, stuck out here and stuck out in the back. And then you'd look at it and play with that. Nice shot. They, of course, would take this. They could just take that piece out. Also made a retractable. <sighs> so it looked like the, air, the mayor stuck his hand up and the letter opener went in his hand. Then I, I'm taking it out like that so you could hold it and then I had to sit in front of a green screen on a different stage in a chair with the camera fixed with a scar that they had painted in and then again on the computer they could make it all fade away and go away and look like it was healing up. We're just always trying to come up with something new and cool and different. 